Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire, and this week I want to talk about how to shade collages with white paper that isn't really white paper. What do I mean by that? Well, I use text and type and oxidation to shade my whites, and I actually never ever use plain white paper. It's too flat. It doesn't have any texture. So that said, I also don't paint my white paper. So if you've got a few minutes, let's talk about shading whites with text, type, and oxidation. Welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about shading whites. People often ask me, how do I shade whites or do I paint white paper or what do I use in white? And the last thing that I use in white is plain white paper. I actually never use plain white paper. I use text and type and oxidation. What does that mean exactly? Well, the first two, text and type, are the fonts and the size of the fonts and the amount of black ink per square inch on the paper. So you can see that a paper like this is a larger font with more spacing in between it. So there's more white per square inch than, say, a paper like this, which is very dense and the type is very small and there's more black per square inch. So that's text and type. And then oxidation is when the air gets to the paper. So you'll see that the air has gotten to the papers down this end of my value chart, making these papers off-white and kind of dark. That's from oxygen, oxidation. So when we seal this up with glue and then varnish, it's not going to change any further none of these papers are going to get any darker from oxidation once they're sealed with the varnish. Now, if you were to go to the bookstore and open up a bunch of brand new books, you would see that your white papers could all be different levels of white, depending on how much they're bleached, how much they have, how much recycled content they have, and the quality and the thickness of the paper. So even within brand new books, you're going to see a wide variety of whites and shades of white. But I've laid these out from light to dark, and I thought I'd go through them with you and explain why they are where they are. But I hope that you can see that here is my lightest paper that I would use in my lightest whites, all the way down, slowly shifting in value to the darkest paper that I would use in my darkest whites. So the first one is a handwriting that's on a very white paper. So the handwriting is very spaced apart, leaving a lot of white space, and the paper is very bright white. So that's my lightest white. My next white is also a handwriting, but this handwriting is smaller and closer together. So it's more dense and there's more black. And also this piece of paper is an index card and the white is not as bright white as the first. My third paper is my favorite love letter from TSA when they search my luggage. In this one, the paper is white, but here we have typeface fonts and they are even smaller and closer together than the handwriting. Here we have a bright white paper that's very densely typed. This type font is smaller than the TSA love letter. It's from an atlas and it is the listing in the back of an atlas. So there's bold font and non-bold font and it is very small and there are columns. So there's a lot more black per square inch. Here's a foreign language book. This is fun because you can't read anything that it says. And it's got a lot of black per square inch. And this paper, by nature of the recycled content or the quality of it, is slightly darker white than the Atlas. My next page is kids' homework. Here's some old kids' homework from kindergarten or first grade. The paper is slightly oxidized because those kids are now in college. Actually, one's actually graduated. Uh, but the handwriting, the kid handwriting, and the pencil, the graphite, is a little bit lighter than black and everything here is spaced out. But the age of the paper is showing, and so it's off-white. The next page is a book page, a children's book. So the fonts are bigger and spaced apart, and because they're bigger, there's less black per square inch. This is also an old book. It's from the 60s, so the paper is slightly off-white. The next page is an encyclopedia or a dictionary 
That type is very close together, lots of dense black, no column breaks or spacing. My next one is a children's book page that has really big type and great open spaces, but it's darker than all of this because of the oxidation. The paper is really off-white compared to down here in the light whites. So as we shift with oxidation, then we have another children's book, but this black type is smaller and closer together than that. So this would be our next value down. Then I've got a very old piece of letterhead from a furniture company in North Carolina. This fun, cool font is varying sizes and typefaces, big and bold, small, medium, and it's also on an oxidized paper. My next sheet is another old book. It's wider type spread further apart than average, but it's not really a kid's book, and it's definitely more oxidized. Here's an old letter with a pen dip, an ink dip pen, some beautiful handwriting. The writing is in brown ink and the paper is quite oxidized. Let me slide these down. The next page is an old book on shorthand and it's got some personal notes in it, some great fonts. It's oxidized and this type is closer together than the handwriting of the former letter. Here I've got another foreign language book. It's oxidized and it's a big font. It's slightly darker than this or almost similar. Here I've got some sheet music with a lot of 16th notes, that's very difficult music to play because those notes are played very quickly and they're very dense because they're close together and they're 16th notes. And they're also on the staff lines. So there's a lot of black per square inch on this slightly oxidized paper. My next sheet is another encyclopedia or um, dictionary page on an oxidized paper with small fonts. Then I've got a great old French children's book. The typeface is big and spread far apart, so you would think it would be further down here, but it is oxidized quite significantly. The paper is really off-white, so that comes down this end. My last one is an old catalog page. They're selling full-size violins for $3.75. It's highly oxidized paper, and the font is smaller almost smaller than anything else I've got. So it's got two things going for it, the smallest, densest type and the most oxidized paper. So there's your full range of values of white. There's no plain white in there whatsoever. I don't paint any of this. I use it as it comes and I collect it from used bookstores, from antique and estate sales, and from art friends who send me things in the mail. So. Your best bet is to start collecting lots of text and type and oxidation to shade your whites. Happy Friday, and thank you for being here.